Hey guys, welcome to the video. So today I'm gonna to give you some of my thoughts around e-bikes. We have my bike here behind me. This is a new bike to me. I've only had it for about two weeks now. And before this, I haven't really had a whole lot of exposure to e-bikes. So this will, a lot of my thoughts will be from a relative newbie that's only been riding e-bikes for a short amount of time now. Outside of e-bikes, I generally ride a lot of road bikes. Um, I grew up riding bicycles. I do bike maintenance myself. So that's about the level that you'll get uh, in terms of opinions from me. This bike is the Rad Power Bikes City Step Through 3. And just looking at the bike, you can see that it's got a step through design, which makes it easy for getting on and off. This is a, an electric bike with a pedal assist and also a throttle. It's a, a class two EV bike. So this bike has a 750 watt motor, which you can see in the back hub there. It also has a removable battery, which has been really handy, whether whether if it's for charging your battery inside or if you just want to remove it um, when you park your bike on the street. It has a one by setup. It's uh, got a Shimano Altus derailleur in the back here. And you can see the shifter is up here, seven speeds. Just use your finger and thumb to adjust through the, di the different gears. The bike has front and rear disc brakes and also has regenerative braking through the motor in the back. The bike has 2.3 inch wide tires and I believe they're 26 inches in diameter which are good for absorbing bumps. A hardtail setup you can see the front fork has suspension but the rear does not. The front fork has been pretty good for absorbing little bumps that you would find in the city. In terms of accessories that the bike comes with it has front and rear uh, fenders which are really good for keeping you dry especially when it's rainy. It also has lights in the front and back and the nice thing about the back brakes is they light up when you're braking. I've installed lots of accessories on this bike. I've got two panniers from Banjo Brothers on the back here. I've got my Portland Design Works bottle cage, got a coffee holder and I've also got a GoPro mount up here. In terms of the cockpit you can see over here we have our shifter, we have our throttle, we have our main screen, and then we also have our buttons to control the main screen and different bike functions over here. So this is how you turn it on. We have a bunch of different things on here. We have our power assist on the bottom. We have our wattage being produced by the motor. We've got our battery levels. We have our odometer and we have the speed that we're going. And also, if you hold these two buttons together, top and middle, you can turn on the lights. So some of the things I want to talk about in terms of riding impressions are just the, the comfort level. Um, what does it feel like to go on this bike and what does it feel like to stop on this bike? So in terms of the comfort level, I really like this bike. I really like the seating position in particular. It's got this upright seating position, which is very relaxed especially compared to the sportier, more hunched over riding positions of, of road cycling. This is just a great, comfortable way to get around town. You can see everything, you can look around, it's just very comfortable. Um, another thing in terms of comfort is this thing does have front suspension, which I talked about earlier. Um, so the front suspension uh, does absorb a good amount of the bumps. Uh, that and the big tires will also absorb a, a little bit of the vibration of just riding. And then it's got a big comfy seat as well. So those three things make this bike very comfortable to, to be on. So in terms of going and stopping, this thing goes and stops well. It's fast, it accelerates well, you'll be able to keep up with the traffic, you can stop easily. I mean, but you're not gonna wanna use all that power all the time. This thing is restricted to 20 miles per hour and you could de-restrict it to 25, but right now I'm in the middle of the forest, I'm on a nice trail right here. I don't necessarily wanna be going full throttle. So it's really great just to have the option of going fast, but you don't need to. And plus, regardless of if you're going fast or if you're going slow, you're never gonna sweat. Like, are you, I shouldn't say never, but you're, you're probably not gonna sweat. These things are just great to get around. I mean, it lets you enjoy everything that's around you. Like right now, I've got a stream right next to me. I'm, I'm going, I see a chipmunk cross the, sh the street. I mean, it's just a great way to get out and enjoy some nature. E-bikes take all the thoughts about going and stopping kind of out of the equation so you can focus on everything else around you. 
And that's really what you want in terms of a mode of transportation. You don't want to be thinking about what you're doing. I mean, this is a pretty, pretty thoughtless um, experience in terms of actually putting effort into riding the bike. I mean, if you could ride a bike, you could ride an e-bike. So we'll do the acceleration test real quick. So the bike itself is about 65 pounds. I have about 25 pounds of stuff with me. I myself weigh about 190 pounds and we're at um, zero miles per hour and we'll see how fast we can get to 20. So I'm starting off kind of in the middle gear. I've got power assist level five and three, two, one, go. Stand on the pedals a little bit. All right, 10, 12, 18, 19, 20. So however long that was. All right, and now we'll do a braking test from 20 to uh, zero. I hope I'm a woo, bug. Hopefully I, my braking skills are okay. So we're at 20.4 miles per hour, three, two, one. Stop. Now I'm in the high gear. So yeah, you definitely have more than enough power to accelerate in traffic, keep up with traffic, and you have more than enough stopping power in case something gets ahead of you and you don't want to hit it. So one of the things about e-bikes is just the amount of power that it gives you. So I'm in, I'm in a medium gear and I have it on power assist level two out of five. And it's giving me 170 watts of power, which is a good amount of power, which means I don't really have to put a whole lot of effort into this whatsoever. I'm still moving the pedals. I'm still getting a little bit of a workout. I'm sure my heart rate's up slightly, probably about as much as you would walking, but this makes it very easy to go wherever you want. I mean, I'm not sweating. I won't sweat at this speed, at this level of effort. It's just a very easy way to get around. Now I'm starting to go up a hill. The fastest I've ever gone up this hill on a road bike has been about 23.9 miles an hour. Right now, and that bike probably weighs maybe like, I don't know, less than 20 pounds. This one, I'm going up at, this bike weighs 65 pounds. I'm going at 21.4 miles an hour right now, up a pretty steep section of the hill. I'm not breathing heavy at all. I would be almost dying if I was on my road bike, because I'd be so out of breath. This thing just eats up hills like it's nobody's business. So one thing that was surprising to me about this bike was the power delivery. So the power delivery on this bike can actually be a little bit lagged. I think that's because of the sensors. There are two types of sensors. The first type of sensor, which this bike has, does it based on rotations of the pedals. It's got something in there that detects whenever your pedals are spinning. When your pedals are spinning, it, it gives you power. The other one does it based on torque. So basically whenever you put pressure into your pedals, it'll give you power. So for this one, I think that there's a lag because if you're not right by that sensor, when you start to do the rotation, it'll be a little bit of a delay until your pedals get to that point where it detects that, where the sensor can detect that it's actually spinning and therefore giving you power. One thing that we get often with these is we have a lot of people that notice that it's an e-bike, probably because of the big honking battery there in the middle of the frame. Um, and they'll, they'll ask us lots of questions about it. So I've been out here for maybe half an hour today and I've had a couple different people come up and ask me about the bike. I'm in the middle of a field, I'm not close to anybody, but people go out of their way to talk about the bike. So that's, that's one thing that um, you should be aware of. You'll also start to notice other people on e-bikes when you yourself start to ride an e-bike. Um, I've noticed a lot of e-bikes in the city, but some of them I'm sure fly under the radar because e-bikes, they're starting to figure out all sorts of ways to fit the battery into different places. Like sometimes you'll see the battery fit into the frame. Sometimes I've seen the battery fit into the rear rack. One of the things I like about this and having the exposed battery is that the battery can be removed. Um, 
So the, the thing that's nice about the battery removal is that I can actually take off the battery when I go to, into a store or something. The battery itself costs about $500, which is about a third of the cost of the bike. So it's nice to have the option of taking the, the battery with you if you're gonna go into a store. Another nice thing about it is that you could just charge it uh, wherever you wanna charge it. Um, there's a cicada that landed here on the uh, frame. So the other thing that's nice about having the, the battery is that you could just take it inside and charge it wherever you want to charge it. So we have uh, this, these bikes when we're at home, we live in a condo and we have it locked up in a common area. And so we don't necessarily want to use their electricity when we're charging it up. So we just take the battery with us and charge it inside the house. So in terms of pros and cons, we'll start off on the pros side of the column. So number one on the pro side of the column, I would say is convenience. We'll start off with design. So this bike has a step through design, which is really convenient to get on and off. It's also got a great rear rack that I have some panniers on there, which is really great for trips to the grocery store. Each of those panniers, which didn't come with the bike, I bought them separately, they're from Banjo Brothers. But each of those panniers can hold a full size grocery bag. So we're lucky enough to live in, a, in an urban environment where we have lots of different grocery store options. I mean, I could probably walk to three different grocery stores, uh, but you might not necessarily want to go to each one of those all the time. And it's hard to walk with, with grocery bags. Um, so this one has been really convenient for trips to the grocery stores, become our new grocery getter. So we talked about going to the grocery store. I mean, this thing's great for going to restaurants. It's great for going for, to trips on the, the National Mall, to go see the monuments. I mean, this thing can go many, many places that a car cannot go, which makes, I mean, bikes can in general, but this takes all the effort out of it. So I guess that leads us to our next point. This is one of the big ones. This is one of, one of the areas where e-bike shines. It's just level of effort. I mean, this thing has a 750 watt motor. I'm about 190 pounds right now, and I haven't had any issue getting up hills whatsoever, even with a fully loaded bike. So that really goes to show how much of a game changer an e-bike is over a regular bike. Here we've got a bunch of hills. I mean, it's a little bit of a trip down to the Potomac, so there's some elevation change here. This thing chews up hills like it's nobody's business. And one thing that my wife has said with her experience with her e-bike is that it gives her a lot of confidence. I mean, she doesn't have to worry about how fast she's going because the bike takes care of that for her. Going over to the cons column, there aren't really a lot of downsides to this bike. You'll have the usual bike things like you're exposed to the elements, sure, but I mean, I think the, the trade-off is that it's like riding around in a convertible with the top down. I mean, you're just gonna have a good time out it as long as, it's a nice, as long as you have nice weather. You're just gonna have a good time outside. So I guess that's not really a, a much of a con. I guess another thing in the cons column is uh, security concerns like you'll have with any other bike. Uh, this is a $1,500 bike. Um, and obviously you'd be worried if you have somebody walking away with it. We use a combination of U-bolts and um, cords and cables and we have the, the bike frame locks. Another thing you could do to mitigate some of the security concern is register your bike with your local police department and also register your bike with Project 529 who then shares your information with police departments. Um, so that will mitigate some of the security concerns. That in combination with good bike locking practices should alleviate most of your security concerns. One of the, uh, so another one for the cons column is how heavy this bike is. This is bike I think is, you know, 65 pounds dry, but once you load it up with everything, it could easily be more than that. So if you have it stored someplace where you have to bring it up and down stairs, it might be difficult to do that. If that's not really an issue for you, then it, does, it shouldn't really matter how heavy the bike is. The motor will carry you up hills, no problem. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is useful. Hopefully you've learned a little bit. Um, I know that I've learned a lot in the two weeks that we've had these bikes. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for this channel in the future. I might take you on some tours of DC. I might do more e-bike themed videos. But regardless of what I do, I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you come back for the next one. Thank you. So welcome to the video. Today I'm going to give you a walkthrough of my e-bike.
but today I'm just going to give you some of my thoughts on e-bikes. Uh, I'm new to e-bikes, I've only ever ridden Right now we're in the middle of a uh, Rude X and we might get a real DC shot right now. We can see the president's uh, helicopters over in the background, the three white tops ruining my video right now. I'll have to uh, write a letter to Biden. Things on your back. Oh, do I? Just on this shoulder. Yep. Yeah, they're all over the place. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Here behind me, I live. Hey, I'm just gonna woo, to carry a full grocery bag each uh, on e bikes. Woo. 